being Iron Dame is an attitude. It's not a question of gender, it's not a question of strength. It's really a question of attitude. The Iron Dames project is not just about three drivers doing races. It's actually a game changer. A lot of people have expected us to fail. We are so extra focused every time we drive. Because we're not going to be the ones who are making those mistakes. Six years ago, I got a phone call from Giacomo Piccini. Then he told me about the idea of the Iron Dames. Basically, they are looking for a more experienced female racer, and I knew that's the right step for me. Deborah Meyer, who is the founder of the Iron Dames, she just has this huge passion to really prove that she was here with this project and she was going to stay. We don't want to be seen in any other ways than any other team. Being a female team is, is the project, but apart from that, we're just a racing team. We say that we are women driven by dreams. By racing with a pink car and pink suits help us underline the message we want to spread. I never wanted to be one of those girls racing on an all-female lineup. I never wanted to be a girl racing in a pink car. It was always against everything I stood up for. But I also realized with time I wanted to be one of the person changing the mentality of people in the motorsport environment showing that females can compete on the same level. I never asked myself the question is it okay to be a, a, a woman in motorsport? I was so convinced that this was my path that I never considered that an obstacle. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go, girls. <laughs> WEC 2023, we, we started with high expectation. The goal was clear, we wanted to become world champion. We knew we had, a, we had the lineup for it, having a strong car and a strong team behind us. The switch to Porsche, I think this was for us drivers a dream come true. I can remember the first time I jumped in the Porsche points, you know, like for practice, and that was insane. We didn't had much testing before, but the test we had was like, whoa, I mean, the car is amazing. And um, coming to Sebring, it was, uh, <laughs> I mean, we were flying. <laughs> was a very, very intense weekend for us. It was war. <laughs> we knew that we, we had to keep pushing and um, when I gave the car to Hael, she, she immediately started pushing. When we go in the car, we give 100%. And Rahel did as well. She gave 101%. And that was 1% too much. I made a mistake during the race. I went off track which in the end costed us a win. I had to apologize to the team, to the teammates. I took that very personal. Sebring was a learning lesson. Le Mans has been a lifelong dream. We knew that we can be competitive. We knew that we can do well. I had prepared so long during the season for that specific race, we had a chance to win the race. Very early, we, we just tried to keep the focus. When everybody else were, was crashing, when it started to rain and did mistakes, the pink car was always there.
the brake were clearly going down and suddenly breaking towards the first chicane, I lost the brake. It was a bit of crazy, but in the end we, we made it back to the box. The work our mechanics did was actually like insane. It took a minute. I went back on track behind the, the car in third position. I saw him. I was convinced I can catch him. We're going to make that podium. We came in, did a super good change of brakes, came out five seconds away from the podium and crossed the line two laps later with the same gap. Can you believe? Can you believe this? It was very, very hard for me because that was exactly the race that I had prepared for as a driver. The fact that I was so sure that we could win it, I think, unfortunately, I cracked a little bit on the pressure I put on myself. So Le Mans is a race that is really, really deep in my heart and it made a small crack in my heart, I would say. Yeah. Come on. You're so amazing. You're the Iron Lips. We never ever give up. You know, Bahrain is historically the, the last race of the season. We knew that doing a good race, we could be vice world champion. Doing a bad race, we could be nowhere. Somehow we had a very positive atmosphere from the beginning on. Now we know exactly what to do. You know, our engineers knew how to do the strategy. Our team knew how to do the perfect pit stops. But God, we really wanted that win. We had to do it. We were very consistent, not making any mistakes. She had a, a very intense last hour. I was in the car alone, but I had my teammates right next to me. I was watching all the, the sectors, you know, between Michelle and, and the Aston that was following. It was really, really hard to watch. because I was so much in my own zone and I was so focused. There was one thing for me in my head and that was, we're gonna win that race. For us, it was really like, finally. The relief I had was physically overwhelming. The pressure was gone, it was a, a moment to celebrate. Yeah, one of the best moments of my life, definitely. Twenty twenty four is going to be another busy season, which is quite exciting. We're going to be in different championships. Of course, another season of uh, WEC. We are also doing the IMSA Endurance Championship, and we're going to do the LMS with a Porsche. We keep growing stronger together, as I always say. Everyone can be an Iron Dames. Going into this season, the biggest target would probably be to go for a championship win. But the Iron Dames are always up to whatever challenge is ahead of them. We are all going into one direction. We want to bring Iron Dames at the top level of motorsport. It was a very nice surprise when we got the news that, hey, Iron Dames, you're going to drive again on a Porsche in 2024. And we said, well, let's do it. Mm -hmm.